Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today we're checking out Missile Command for the Atari 2600. Originally released in 1982 arcades, this was eventually ported to the Atari 2600, the Atari 8-bit computer line, the 5200, and it's appeared on a ton of collections. It was developed by Atari and published by, well, uh, Atari. It was designed by David Thur. 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 Ow! Stop making fun of his name! It's not my fault, his name is... Come on, Dynamite. <laughs> anyway. Get yeah. it, because Napoleon... Yes, we goddamn get it. Anyway, this is another one of those timeless classic games from the arcade and had a hell of a good port on the 2600. So, let's just get into it. The graphics. Obviously, for any Atari game, they're going to be scaled down from the arcades, but this is also significantly different looking than River Raid or Pitfall, which we gave high praise to. Don't get us wrong, we still really enjoy the fact that they are simplistic graphics, but they magic capture a lot. The constant explosions, the multiple missiles coming down on screen, the even little explosions of the houses once they do get hit, it's all pretty good. And we gotta give credit that they were at least willing to change some of the backgrounds or the towns, at least put in a few different colors into the game. It may not look amazing and it may be very simplistic, but we still appreciated it, so we gave it a 6. It's above average, nothing spectacular, but we still appreciated it. It's better than Outlaw. Is it better than Beat em and Eat em? Nothing's better than that. <laughs> so when it comes to beer, I'm not gonna give any. Alright, the sound. Um, a pretty good package, like usual. The, you get the sounds of your constantly shooting missiles and explosions. You get sounds from the UFO ships to come down. You get sounds when houses get bombed. You get sounds when you get an extra life. You get a little nice little ending, almost kind of cinematic. I mean, it gives you the impression of what it's trying to do of just everything exploding and everyone dying. So, that's cool. It gets the job done. Sure, there could be more here and there, but it's really got a consistent kind of aura of noise and ambiance to it that really just gives you the whole sense of almost dread of, you know, all the missiles trying to kill you. So, it does a good job. Long story short, we gave it sevens. And when it comes to beer, mm, yeah, you know what, you don't even really need one. Once again, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me say it, but how can you complain about most Atari games in the control? The answer is, you can't. See, Jim, I told you. You always want to complain. What? What am I complaining about? Everything. That's eh, probably This game, there's really no issues, obviously. They couldn't carry over the trackball from the arcade, which is what we prefer for a game like this. But still, this Atari joystick, it's very well built for a game like this. The only issue, and I've said this for every game, there is a little bit of sluggishness and moving in certain directions can take a little bit longer than you would like. But still... We didn't think it impeded on the gameplay at all, and it's something that we just got used to immediately, so we gave it nines. It's damn near perfect, we really appreciate it, and as far as beer, I'm gonna add one, because taking a game that controlled so well in the arcade with a trackball and being able to make that joystick work, I applaud that. Ah, uh, the gameplay. Well, it's pretty goddamn simple. So basically what you do is you control a missile battery, and you're trying to shoot other missiles, and enemy ships out of the air before they blow you up. And really, that's all there is to it. You just go through wave after wave and just try to live as long as possible and get the highest score you can. You get a new life after every 10,000 points, and it's actually really satisfying when you run out of all your towns, but you still scored enough to get an extra life, so you hear that magical jingle and you get another chance to play. It's an awesome feeling. The levels, as you would expect, they get way faster, way harder, and way more intense the more you go on. That's what she said. Uh, I was waiting for something like that. So besides trying to protect your all the towns from getting blown up, you also have to protect yourself because if a missile lands on you, then you lose a whole stock of your missile battery, which makes your life a whole hell of a lot harder. Overall, it's just, it's so simple, but it's so fun. Like, it's hard to describe if you've never played it, but... It's got that ultimate pick-up-and-play kind of style. You eventually learn how to plan your missiles when they do their explosion after they detonate, that you can try and take a couple out of the time to save points and missiles, but it's just so fun. There's a lot to it while there being almost nothing to it, if that makes any sense. So, overall, we gave it 8s. 
And when it comes to beer, I'm going to give it two beers for nothing wrong with the game, but more for the fact that you're going to keep playing this once you start. So you're going to get thirsty and you might actually wind up playing for a long time. The originality. Like most early Atari games, this game felt strangely unique for just a simple idea of shooting things out of the air. The idea that you're defending your home world or cities, whatever you want to call it, from these incoming missiles, it really wasn't done before this point. Yes, we've seen plenty of other shooting mechanics and even bomb mechanics in games, but this just had a very unique feel to it. And it did spawn a lot of clones, however, we couldn't give it a perfect 10 because it wasn't really a trendsetter when it came to genres like Pitfall was or Adventure. So, we gave it 9s. Still well, well above average, and for 1981 on the Atari, this one stood out of the crowd from all the other shooters. When it comes to beer, I'm going to give it one. And once again, it's a celebratory beer for being such a unique game of the time. All right, the replayability. Well, there's a two-player alternating mode, which means it automatically gets a five from us. And besides score attack, like we said, there really isn't much to it. Sorry, folks. So Brian gave it a six and I gave it a seven. And the only reason I gave it a seven is because I just think it's so damn fun and inherently replayable that yeah, it could have used a little extra boost in the score. It's just a lot to come back to. And when it comes to beer, I'll just add one more beer for the genius of David Thurr. Thurr. Ah! Overall, this is a game we love. And we gotta be honest, at least for me, when I think of an Atari game, my mind goes right to this game first. The constant explosions, the sounds that this game generates, it's exactly what I think of iconic Atari sounds. Jim mentioned, it's simple to play, but god damn is it addicting. You're gonna wanna keep coming back cause you know you might have just messed up once, and there is something so satisfying about getting that extra life when you have no cities available and it pops back up. I can't describe it, but it's a game that anyone can pick up and play and right away fall in love with. It's one of those ones you always feel like you can do better with too every time you die. Yeah, and... You know, the people that can get to whatever you want to call them, the, there's no true ending, but you get up to that crazy score and then the screens start going crazy and there's multipliers. It's just one of those games I respect the hell out of someone who can do it like that because we sure as shit can. Nope. So, we both gave it eights. It's above average, it's another must own for the Atari. And when we combined all of our scores together, it rounds out to a 7.9. It's pretty much right where we think it should be. We know others, once again, we'll argue it should be higher, but go back to our other reviews and you'll understand. We don't just give out 10s. Now, this is the last Atari game we're doing, and we gotta be honest, we think this was a pretty solid list of games to go over, and it was capped off with Missile Command, so we enjoyed it. If you haven't played this game before, go out, do yourself a favor, and try it. When it comes to beer pairing, I'm gonna go with the Champion Brewing Company's Missile IPA. Yes, this was an easy pairing because of Missile and Missile Command, but honestly, an IPA like this that comes in at 7% is a perfect beer to drink in between those rounds, because you're not going to be drinking much as you're actually playing, and you want something that's going to give you a good enough buzz but not get you too drunk. This is a pretty solid IPA coming out of Virginia, so if you can find a six-pack, sit down, play this game, and enjoy yourself. But remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. As always guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time guys, cheers.